good morning, YouTube. I don't know if I can, um, oh, here we go. Lightening that up a little bit. All right, so today I thought we would make onion soup together. Now, if you don't have a pressure canner, unfortunately you're not gonna be able to make this particular recipe. I mean, you could make the soup, you just won't be able to can it up. However, now's the perfect time to uh, go ahead and run out and get a pressure canner. <laughs> I absolutely love pressure canning. It is my favorite thing in the world to do. It is, oh, I just love it. It's an addiction. All right, hold on, let me put the scratch back. And I'm gonna get out my um, canning salt because if I'm using salt in a recipe that I'm canning, um, I just use that rather than table salt. So, canning salt. All right, so this is relatively easy. And if you wanna know how I make onion soup, this is it. So you can make the onion soup, you just can't can it. But if you wanna make it for dinner with, um, I don't know, French baguette or a crusty Italian bread, or some rolls would be delightful. So, all right, so the first thing I wanna do is get out, uh, there's probably gonna be a lot of editing in this because I'm kind of starting this from the beginning. So I got out my pressure canner, I have my canning salt out. I have my basket over here, my bucket, full of hot soapy water that I'm going to rewash quart jars in because I always rewash my jars. Um, French onion soup I do not can in wide mouth jars. There's just really no reason to. Um, so I'm just going to use my regular mouth jars for that. Um, but this recipe is relatively really, really simple. And uh, pressure canning takes a while. It's 75, uh, 74, 75 minutes, 75 minutes. Um, but that's because we're dealing with onions. And uh, so, and beef broth. So, all right, um, let me go get my jars and we'll get started. So now that I have my box of quart jars out, this is what I do. Just take off the, even though these have been already actually washed and used, washed, put away, um, just being in my laundry room, you know, they collect little bits of dust on them, I always rewash them. So I put the lids in there first and rings. And you, this is a great time to double check your jars just to make sure that there are no cracks or anything on the top. Just run your hands across it. Make sure there's nothing sharp or icky. Now, um, this recipe, I actually double. Um, you can cut it in half. I got this recipe from Canning Granny, which is a site I love. I know a lot of people are iffy about Canning Granny. Um, I love her site. I've learned a lot from her. Um, you know, pick and choose what you want to follow. You know, do your own research, like all canning recipes. Um, but uh, I tried her recipe for... Um, for the uh, onion soup and absolutely loved it. So that is what we are going to, that's the recipe we're going to use and I will leave a link to her site down below. So now pretty much all I do is um, I get a cloth and this is just a big um, cotton, cotton cloth here that I'm laying out over here and then that way when my jars are washed I can go ahead and um, and put them right over there okay. so real easy all I do is like anything else I basically give these just a really good rinse. I don't really have to wash and scrub these. These are perfectly clean. 
but have a quick sit in soapy water. Never hurts, in my opinion. And that will all go into a sim simmering pot of water. So they'll get extra clean in there. I just like to rinse off any dust particles or anything that might be on them. And then with my jars, they go in. I usually try to put like three in at a time. All right, real easy because they're already clean. I just shake the soapy water in them and give them a good rinse. These have already been washed in the dishwasher, so I know they are good, but I don't know. I just like things extra clean. Okay, guys, sorry about that. All right, as I was saying before, my battery went dead. Do your own research. Um, and do what you think is best. This is just my way. I'm just showing you guys the way I do it, okay? You definitely don't have to follow it. You can definitely have your opinions on it. I'm just showing you my process, all right? So I'm gonna put these in the oven now, and then I'm gonna bring out my pots to actually make the broth and to um, start sauteing the onions. And when I get to that part, I will bring you back. All right, all right guys, so one of the first things we need to do Let's cut our onions. So I've got a nice big bowl over here that I'm just gonna dump my onions in. Um, I would put them in the food processor, but they tend to grind up a little too much for me that way. So it's just easier for me just to chop them real fast with my hands. Okay, just chop them in half. Remember, these are gonna get sauteed up. So you don't have to be super thin. Okay, and just put them in there. Remember, keep your onion peels um, so that you can use them in your chicken or beef stock when you make homemade stock or soup. And yes, you can write to me and tell me I chop like crap. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, my hands are pretty swollen today from my, um, I've got a combination of arthritis from years of typing and painting and, um, and also um, carpal tunnel. So some days my hands just, act up more than others. And some days I'm just glad I can use a knife. <laughs> I swear if this camera does not quit cutting out on me. <laughs> yes, honey. You're not going to want to stay around here, honey. <laughs> no. And if you want to, you can cut your onions in half and make them smaller. I do that too. I want to peel in there. Okay, and give them a quick chop in half. And now I've got a bowl of onions. All right. Then I'm going to take over to my pot and I'm going to saute these in a half a stick of butter, four tablespoons. Now, if you're using seven medium ones, you're just going to use two tablespoons, but I'm going to use four. And um, we don't want a lot of butter because we're canning, so we don't want a lot of fats in there, all right? But we do need to brown our onions. So, all right, so we're going to take it over to the stove and I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so now we're over here. I'm just going to turn on my pan and grab some butter. I'll have to add my onions bit by bit here until I get them all cooked down. Wish I had a bigger pot. 
This is my canning pot. Oh, I guess I could have used that, eh? But I used this last time. It should work. All melted. I'm gonna go ahead and just start throwing in some onions. <laughs> what are you doing, honey? I know you want to watch me cook, don't you? I'll just try to break up your onions as you throw them in. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Canning with a two-year-old is quite an adventure. Alright, I'm not going to keep boring you. Once I get them all in, I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, I just wanted to bring you back and show you that I put all of the onions <laughs> into my pot. Um, what I do is I just add it little bit by little bit and as it cooks down, you know, onions have a lot of moisture in them. Um, as it cooks down, I just add a little bit more and a little bit more and I just keep cooking and I'll just keep cooking these until they get nice and sauteed and caramelized. I don't want to over caramelize them, but I just want them nice and um, nice and sauteed. So. I'm just going to let this continue to cook, and I will be back once they're ready to get put into jars. Okay guys, so we are back, and I've got my big canning pot on the stove. Let me turn off this fan just while I make this video here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the broth now. I might as well do that while my onions are still over there cooking. As you can see, they really, they've really reduced themselves now. So. Cooking up beautifully. But while these finish off and become nice and caramelized, we might as well make the broth and get that going before I get my canner going here. So, in this, I have 24 cups of water. All right. Let me get out my beef paste because that's what I'm using. Okay. okay, so this is what I'm using. Um, let me get you focused here. I'm using the Tones Beef Base. You can use um, your own beef stock, whatever you want to use. This is just how I make it, how I do it. And I'm probably going to use up what's in here, which is probably about... Mm, so much I can scrape out of here. Probably gonna be two big tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of paste here. So I'm gonna pop that in. I might need more. I'm just gonna add this until I can get it to the taste that I like. Okay, and just put all that in and let that dissolve up. And that would be two heaping tablespoons. Now I might need more, so I'm going to whisk this in, heat it up. and see how it goes, okay? If I have to have a whisk, it should just melt right up. I know it's so hard to see. Let's see if I can... Is that help any? Oh, my lighting is terrible in this kitchen. That is... Okay. Now let's just take a little spoon. Give it a taste. 
I think it's going to need a lot more. That looks awfully light. And it does. I'm going to add at least two more heaping tablespoons to that. Break it off. what I make my chicken stock into. I love this big pot. I need to get one like not as large as this one but still large on the large side. Uh, side. Uh, just if I need something bigger than the stock pot, the stock pots that I have. I don't need one quite this large. I need like an in-betweener. Still quite a bit of paste in there, so let's keep stirring. It'll dissolve as it heats up. Okay, guys, I ended up adding one more tablespoon. So it was five heaping tablespoons to 24 cups of water. Alright. That tastes and looks beautiful. Make sure that when you taste test your stuff, you want to make sure you use a clean spoon every time. Especially if you're giving canning stuff away to friends and family, they don't want your spit in their food. So, just a little tidbit of something that you might not think about <laughs> when you're canning. Alright, so the next thing I want to add to this is garlic powder. Let me get my tape measuring spoons. We're just going to add one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, not salt, not granulated garlic. I'm using, I'm using garlic powder. I have my garlic powder in here. Okay. So one and a half teaspoons. I know it sounds weird, but it's damn good. Trust me. So I am using A1. Okay. And I hope I have four teaspoons left because my kids love this stuff. All right. Then what I like to do, what's not in Canning Granny's recipe, I just like it. It worked out for me the last couple of times I've made this. I just like putting a splash of the Worcestershire -sh 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 sauce in it. Just a splash, not a lot. Just a, just a splash. But I like the deepness that it gives the soup. All right, and then we're gonna add two teaspoons of canning salt. So, I'm grab my bag of canning salt here. And I use the Pickling and canning salt by Mrs. Wages. All right, you can get this at wherever you buy your your canning jars. They should have it. I buy mine at Walmart, so you don't have to go anywhere fancy. My Kroger also sells it. Two teaspoons of canning salt. All right, and that's it as far as the broth. I mean, how easy is that? Just a few simple ingredients. That is it. Right. Got a good stir all the way around here. Now my jars have been um, 
in the oven for quite a while so I went ahead and I turned them down to 175 just because they don't have to be at 225 for this long I mean it doesn't hurt on their jars but I did go ahead and turn them down just to keep warm all right and then you want to go ahead and grab another spoon and give this a taste because you always want to taste it oh <laughs> mm. this is so phenomenal now not only do i use this as um uh onion soup I put it in my ground beef to make my loose hamburgers, like my Roseanne uh, from her show, <laughs> Loose Meat Sandwiches. I've shown that. I've made a video on that. Um, I made it on that hoagie that I put on that um, that cracked black pepper and garlic bread I made. Um, I cooked my meat. After my meat is fully cooked, I throw a jar of this in it and I just let it simmer. And um, the meat will just suck up these uh, ju this juice and the flavors, and it's phenomenal. Um, I also use this as an au jus to dip your roast beef sandwiches in. So there's quite a few uses for this soup, or just for the broth. I mean, you don't even have to can this with onions. If you're not an onion lover, you don't have to can this with onions. Just can it up. But I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And it looks really pretty once it's in the jars. It really does. All right, so over here in my onion pot here, let's see, let me get you down here and hopefully darken you up some so you can see my onions. These are, so hang up beautifully and they're almost good to go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my station because behind the scenes, <laughs> it's very messy around here. So let me get my pot going for my lids and my rings. Let me get my canner on my stove filled with water. Um, then let me transfer these pots over to my counter, set up my canning uh, little station here, and um, we'll get started. Okay guys, as I have everything kind of set up for me, um, my pressure canner has three inches of water in it. I'm just going to actually put the lid over my counter just for now. And I've got my onions here, as you can see. They are nice and sauteed down. All right. And then my beef broth is actually ready to go. So I'm just going to move this here and bring that pot over here so that can be ready to go. I want to bring it up to a boil just so you know that all the flavors have mended. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn my canner on low, just so it can start heating up the water. Alright, and then I'm going to start bringing out my jars. Okay, so, grab one here, make sure that that is focused for you guys. Let's lighten it up. All right, and I have over here in my jar over here, I had my funnel in the simmered water here just to give it an extra good clean. Even though it's clean, you just want to make sure. What's nice about pressure canning is that everything gets sterilized in the pressure canner, so you don't have to worry so much. Now, the amount of onions you put in this really is um, up to you. I usually do uh, just a scoop or two. Okay, there's one. Two. All right. 
and that's it. Then we're just going to go ahead and fill up the jar with broth. I should use my big canning. I think I will. Let's see if that works a little bit better for me. I love this um, this big canning ladle worth the extra money because it holds a lot. Good stir here. Okay, we're going to fill this up to one inch of headspace. Plus, I love it because it has this little gripper on the side. You see the little gripper? <laughs> so you can put it on the side of your pot there. All right. Okay, guys, I just needed to grab my little jar so I can put some vinegar in it. Wipe my rims. You can get a napkin or paper towel. I use cloth because I'm trying to stay away from paper products other than toilet paper. <laughs> there you go. Alright. What a beautiful. Alright, so one inch headspace. And just dip in our cloth. Wipe our rim real good. Edge real good. It's what I love about that funnel is it really protects the entire um, rim from getting dirty. And then I'm just going to go ahead and finger tight. And where are my tongs? I'm so disorganized today. And Mason fell asleep. So now that he's asleep, I'm trying to get the canning done and finished. I'm trying to get laundry done and getting all those things done uh, that I normally, you know, make me slow with him around. And there it is. So you have your onions on the bottom. Look at that beautiful broth. Fantastic. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right into my canner. All right, and then we're gonna start on the next jar. Now, if you end up needing more broth, it's not a big deal because you can make it real fast. You see how simple it is to make? You can make it while you're um, processing your jars for 75 minutes. You have plenty of time. All right. Go ahead and wipe the rim. jar number two. Alright. I'm just going to keep going. Alright guys. So I've got all seven. Seven quarts in my canner. As you can see there. And I have just a little bit of broth left. I would definitely need to make some more. I probably have another, uh, enough for one more quart. But that's it. And then I have quite a bit of onions left. But you know what, you guys? Because I'm making this, 
and it smells so good and it's so cold outside and uh, windy and rainy I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the rest of this and make it for dinner and I'm not gonna can it after all I'm gonna make it for dinner because I have some leftovers in there that the kids could eat as a side dish but especially Matt and I I'll just make um a crusty loaf of uh, of uh, Italian bread or French bread and um, and just have some onion soup for dinner. God, it sounds so good. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of canning the rest, which is so bad, because I could probably get, honestly, I could get another uh, probably four quarts out of this. So I would really only need to make a little bit more broth. Uh, probably one batch instead of a double batch. But I think I'm going to make it for dinner instead because it looks so good and it smells so good and I'm so hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and process the seven. Hey, seven is good to put up on my shelf, right? And I can always do more, um, although i got to do sweet onion jam. That's going to be next, but I'll just have to pick up another 10-pound bag of onions next time I'm out. And I'll make more onion soup. But anyway, right, so that's the plan. It's changed because I'm hungry and I'm cold and I really want some soup and bread. Um, so all right, so we have all of this in the in our in our um in our canner. I'm gonna come over here, my totally messy kitchen. All right, with my lid. And gently, gently, gently set her down and lock her. Now I'm going to have to make sure that my edges are good here. So let me put you back on the tripod as I crank her up. And once she starts venting, um, we're going to count 10 minutes on the timer. I'm going to let her, let her vent 10 minutes and then we will cap her with the weight, it's 10 pounds of pressure. Once she comes to pressure and uh, this little thing starts jingling, um, we will then begin our countdown. It's 75 minutes once we get to that point. So I will bring you back when we get there and uh, we'll just continue on through the process together. All right guys, I'll be back. All right guys, just real fast. I just wanted to show you that I dumped the rest of that broth in the same pot that had the onions in it. Um, I've got paste still there see that I'm dissolving. Um, I went ahead and added 12 more cups of water, three more heaping tablespoons of beef base, another splash of Worcester sauce, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> um, a three quarters teaspoon of garlic, um, and just a teaspoon of salt and um, I also added about a half teaspoon of black pepper and I will tell you this tastes divine it's so good um, it's as good as any French onion soup that you would get at a restaurant I tell you that uh, and it's real easy real simple to make First time I made this, I wanted to slap myself because I could not believe that all these years I had been paying two dollars or two fifty for a can of soup at the grocery store, or using that packaged dry stuff with the dehydrated onions. And all this time, I could have easily made onion soup. Ugh! And that's why I make these videos because if I can do it you can do it and you might be just like me and didn't even know thought it'd be super hard and it is not so I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil and then I am going to shut it off and I'll put a lid on it and it can sit on my stove until dinner time I'm gonna go ahead and just make um, a simple uh, basic just a crusty loaf of bread that I'm gonna serve with this and um, we're gonna keep it simple tonight Okay guys, so this is all done canning and we can't pull it out. I just shut it off until it comes down to pressure. But what I can show you 
is shaping bread. Let me see if you can see down here. I'm going to make some bread to go with this. I think I'm just going to um, I think I'm just going to shape it and oh. pan here. Put a flower down. My counter is nice and clean here. I still have to wash my board from all the onions. I don't think I'm going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to get all the air bubbles out of this. It's not going to be a real big loaf of bread tonight. I think there's just going to be a couple of us eating onion soup and bread. The other two kiddos will opt for the hot dog leftovers. So, okay, so I'm just pulling, okay, pinching. Okay, tuck that in. Except I think I'm going to um, let this be free formed on the sheet. I think I think I'm gonna roll it long ways, kind of like a French baguette. Oh, what's the matter with the babies? Put this in the sink. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to be it. Well, what's the matter, my sweet love? Are you crabby? And then I think I'm going to put some scores in it. Egg, but I hate to waste a whole egg on just a little thing. What's the matter? You want to watch me, Mama cut some bread? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And just score. 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 Okay. Simple. All right, so now this has to raise another 30 minutes, and that's probably how long it will take for my canner to depressurize here and go back to zero pounds. So I'm going to grab a cloth. But I think I'm going to rub it down with uh, oil. Hold on, baby. i got to put you down for just one minute, okay? All right. A little bit of oil. And a quick rub. Just so it doesn't dry out. Very crabby. Okay, so I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 degrees. And um, that's what I'm going to bake this on. And I'm just going to let it rise here for the next 30 minutes. And I will be back when this goes in the oven and the jars come out of the canner. All right, guys, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so it's been a half hour. My bread is ready. I'm just going to make the marks a little bit deeper. All right. And in the oven, it's going to go for about 20 minutes. My canner is ready to be emptied. 
Okay, so go around. I'm gonna lift this off there first. Let out any additional steam that might be trapped inside there. All right, how's it going, guys? Okay, so there's my bread. All nice and done. I already stole a piece of it because I'm hungry and I wanted to taste the crunch. See if you can hear it. Hear that? Mmm. Mmm. So good, so good. Nothing like freshly baked bread. There really isn't. So I'm warming up my soup here for dinner. I'm going to move my bread just a little. Many dishes to wash. Alright. And I got this mat right here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop open a canner. Okay, because it has come down from pressure. There's no more steam coming from the vent. What I do is I go around and I loosen all of them up a little bit. And then they can all kind of come down. Okay, so when you take this off, you want to be really careful. You spin it and you lift it away from your face. Because that steam will burn you. Okay. Let me put it over here. And. Let me get my tongs. And we will pull out the first jar. You guys see that? Turn on the big light. There's one. Oh, they look beautiful. <laughs> that one's already popped. And so is that one. Get you back over here and get you focused and look at that you guys isn't that beautiful that is our home canned onion soup so tomorrow when these cool I will check them all for seals well I'll check them tonight for seals and in fact I think they've all sealed already so not even a, that's not even an issue tonight. So they've already popped. Um, but tomorrow when they're cool, again, I will take off the rings. I'll check the seals. I'll give them a bath in soapy water with some vinegar. And then I will put them on my canning shelf. So that's it. That Was it that hard? Was it pretty easy? I think it was pretty easy, eh? Now tomorrow, the plan is to make uh, sweet onion jam, which I love to use on my burgers and my meatloaf, so and my pork tenderloins. So we will make that together. That's another 10 pounds of onions. So we will do that. But yeah, there you go. There you have it. Canned French onion soup. All right, guys, I'm going to go edit this video together and throw it up for you guys so you guys can enjoy it. Maybe make your own onion soup or can it if for those of you who can uh if you guys give this a try let me know what you think 
All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.